I hereby introduce to you, Mr. Michael Veazey. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show, Amazing FBA, with your host, Michael Veazey here. And delighted to have back on the podcast one of the uh, really good thinkers of the Amazon space, original thinkers, I think, as well. A very clear-minded and entertaining guy. So um, this is the anti-guru himself, Anthony Lee of Zonblast, Zon Squad, and uh, all other things Amazon. Welcome back to the show, Anthony. Thank you very much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to talk with you about this subject again. Yeah, likewise with you. Well, there's so many subjects. We were talking just before the show on about four or five subjects. I'm like, this guy has got so much to offer, but we're going to zoom in today on a couple of really, really uh, crucial and actionable areas, I believe, for um, Amazon sellers everywhere. So before we get into that, Anthony, just for those who haven't come across you before, um, tell us a sort of potted history of how you came to be selling on Amazon and what you're up to now. So uh, the short version, um, I was open to entrepreneurial suggestion, stumbled upon a video by uh, Ryan Moran, who does the Freedom Fastlane, um, where he talked about buying stuff off of Alibaba, putting your brand on it, selling it on Amazon, which was a brand new pro uh, topic, like a brand new concept for me. It completely made sense. and. As soon as I saw that video, I was hooked, and that was that was what got me on the journey. Um, shortly thereafter, after consuming as much information as I possibly could about importing from uh, China, I uh, I launched my brand. I've been selling on Amazon now uh, for th a, about three years. In that time, I've had the great pleasure of being a consultant for a number of uh, other brands. Um, Stepping into the role of director of operations for Zonblast, um, stepping into a, a partnership role with the paid mastermind Zon Squad, and I've written two books about selling on Amazon: one for beginners and one for more advanced folks. Uh, and it's been it's been a wonderful ride. Wow, that's a really quite impressive CV in terms of uh, Amazon info as well as the Amazon thing itself. So um, today we were going to talk about a topic that I think is really really important and i think it's one of those lovely areas where if you get it right it's easy wins and it's not necessarily going to take you months to to implement or um you know to get results either so that area is optimization now it's a buzzword that goes around first of all can you tell us what is it uh, in terms of amazon selling and why does it matter so optimization in terms of amazon is basically where you're optimizing your listing that's your your property that you have control over on Amazon. Uh, and what that means is you are setting up all aspects of your listing in such a way that it gets the most traffic and the most sales. So um, that's traffic and conversions, which is essentially the rules behind optimizing anything that you have on the internet, no matter what it is. Uh, so those rules don't go away just because you're using the Amazon platform. Um, and the reason it's important, is, especially in the beginning, is because you want to be set up for the best possible scenario for success as possible. Uh, there's a lot of competition on Amazon. And it, I mean, it's not one of those things that like, if you don't get it right, you're just not going to win. It's just you want to set yourself up for success. And it's one of those things that's, um, I mean, you should be doing it right from the beginning anyway. So it's, it, I mean, it's good. It's good practice to go in there and 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 get everything optimized first Great. and foremost. So you just um, put your finger on a, one question I was going to ask, ask, which is, um, should you worry about doing that from the beginning? So the word optimization implies that you know, Asian, it's a process. So you optimize something that exists, but you're suggesting that instead of just whacking up a listing and then seeing what happens and adjusting course, you think right from the beginning you need to set your listing up for in a precision kind of way. If you build a house, you're going to lay the foundation. Your optimization for the first listing or the, the product before you launch it is the foundation. So it needs to be solid and, and, you know, that's, I mean, that's how you build a strong house. That's how you build a strong business. Great. Okay. So it's really important to get it right from the beginning. So that's a very clear answer. So tell us about the elements. What does it consist of an Amazon listing optimization approach? Okay. So, um, Optimizing your Amazon property 
consists of, uh, I mean, basically all elements of the listing. These are things that you have control over. So you've got your images, which are first and foremost the most important part of the whole thing. And we can go into why that is in a minute. Um, your title, um, which heavily drives uh, the, ser the terms that you're, you're found relevant for and therefore will rank for. Your bullets and description, which is the copy, both important in terms of SEO for Amazon, as well as important in terms of selling your prospective buyer. And uh, your price point, which is a huge factor in everything. Uh, those are those are essentially all of the aspects that you have control over. Other aspects that do affect it, but you don't have total control over is your star rating and reviews, which do affect, uh, I guess, the level of optimization or more specifically conversion rate. But uh, the only thing you can do for that is put forth the best business possible to get organic reviews. Okay, so let's break that down a little bit. So you just said the images are the most important. So um, why are they most important and what does that imply about how you approach it? Okay, so the very first thing you have to understand is um, you, what you're driving towards is uh, increased traffic and increased conversions. Uh, so you actually have to look at which one you're focused on. The the reason the image is so important, well, the first place that you're going to get somebody to come to your listing is from the search page, which means the first thing you want to focus on is increased traffic. And the first thing that people see when they search in Amazon are the is the main image. So this potentially is the most important thing that you can possibly have because it is what people are going to see and decide to click on your listing for. So that's, those, that's your traffic right there. So once you know that, you focus on making a great main image. Um, and the approach is kind of like a, a dating profile pic, right? You put up the best possible picture, like you just the best one, the one that you look the best in, the one that your product looks the best in. White background, because Amazon says so. Uh, at least 80% of the image. And there's a reason for that because people need to be able to see it. Um, and it's just got to be a good, you know, the best angle that shows as much of the product as possible. Uh, and it just looks great and it's appealing and it makes people want to click it because they want it to get larger so they can see more. Now, when you're doing this, the other thing to keep in mind that mm, so many people miss the boat on, which is actually pretty tragic. Every year we see statistics at least 70% and growing and growing every year of holiday sales are taking place on mobile devices, which means you need to optimize everything, not just for optimization's sake, but also for mobile. So you need to see what it looks like in a mobile browser. The main image on a PC, everything is perfectly square. In a mobile browser, the images actually look different shapes, uh, different sizes. So an important thing, that's just a little tidbit that a lot of people don't know. Uh, how you get your image to, pick, to, to appear as large as possible in mobile is to make the pixel dimensions a lo longer than they are wide. So you're looking for a portrait as opposed to a perfect square or a rectangle because those actually appear smaller. And you can test this, go to your mobile browser look for anything and you'll notice that some of the images are bigger. Well, how, how is that? And I remember struggling so hard trying to figure out how to work that cutting out every bit of the out of the, of the background possible. And then I found out it's not the background, it's the actual dimension. So um, get a great picture, make it a portrait. Then it shows up as big as possible in mobile and it, it it's appealing enough to get the click. And that's, that's the first place you need to start for images. Excellent. Thank you. That's that's one very important point that you've made there. Um, apart from the you know little tactical thing, which will save somebody hours and hours of time messing about like you did. Um, and we all end up doing these things, don't we, that take hours. And uh, that's when the value of information comes in because it saves your time. But also um, the fact that 70% of stuff is on mobile devices. I like the fact this is the first time I've heard of Americans say mobile because that's what we call these devices in, in the UK. We, we call this a mobile phone. You call it a cell phone, obviously. But um, it, that, that's, that a mis invented it. <laughs> that's a misnomer because the most of them don't actually work off cell towers anymore. I don't think they're, Is that they're, right? That's they're, it's different. It's not a, it's not cellular anymore. So that's why I call it mobile. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, 
the fact that everything has to be optimized for mobile, I think, is is got a very big implication because obviously the main image is going to display differently, but also people's habits on a mobile are different. And I remember that the last couple of things I bought on Amazon, I think I did a podcast about one because I just I did it so quickly, I could almost not catch my buying process because it was so quick, it was so instinctive. Despite the fact I do I sell this stuff all the time, right? I talk to people about Amazon every damn day of the week, you know. But it's um, yeah, it's you've got to recognize the speed at which your customers are shopping and the device they're on changes the the mental process as well. I mean, uh, what's your take on optimizing for mobile specifically? Well, um, the t my take on optimizing for mobile is actually uh, my take on optimization period. And that's when you optimize, don't do it from a seller's perspective. Reverse engineer it from the buyer's perspective. That's the reason why the mobile optimization happens at all, because you're thinking about it from the buying per buyer's perspective. Where do most buyers interact with Amazon? Statistics say on mobile device. So start from there. Um, you're making a good main image. When you craft your title, make sure all the important bits, the, the best keyword and the, the, the biggest benefit are in the first 80 characters. On a PC browser, it actually... Uh, cuts it off at like 130 or something characters in mobile browser it cuts it off at 115 characters and in the app it cuts it off at 80 but if you get the important information within the first 80 it shows in every single browser so from the buyer's perspective no matter what device you're on you see the most important information and uh, same with the bullets make sure the most important bullets are the first three because in uh, mobile the first three are the only ones that show in the in the preview. Um, actually spend time with your description. The first 201 characters are shown in mobile, and they show above the bullets. So maybe reiterate some of the benefits you point out in the bullets in the first 201 characters in the description. Because from a buyer's perspective, uh, you're probably going to interact with you on mobile. And if you do that, your main listing will also look good. So, I mean, they just, they work hand in hand. You just got to reverse engineer it from that perspective. That's a really, really good thing. I like the fact that if you uh, optimize for one, the, the narrowest, the hardest target to hit, if you like, everything else is better anyway. That's really good. And also just a tactical thing. I had no idea, which is very ignorant of me, um, that the first 201 characters, uh, you know, show in the description above the bullets on a mobile device, because I guess I haven't taken the trouble after spending hours optimizing my own listings, I haven't taken the trouble to double check how it displays on a mobile in a browser, which is so easy to do, right? But I just hadn't thought of it. You, so, as a seller, you have enough to think about. These are all very, very natural things for people to overlook because, man, we have a lot of stuff on our plate. So, you know, that's that's why I'm trying to help. Point it out Absolutely. for you. Well, this is brilliant. I'm getting value already, and uh, for anyone who's newer to the game than than I am, it's going to be even better. So this is great stuff. Um, so we talked about the main image, obviously very very important because that's what displays in the search results. We talked about the title and how important it is to get everything in the first 80 characters, especially your benefits, main keywords. Uh, what about the other images? So presuming that somebody's clicked through to your listing, um, what else do we do with the images? How do we plan that out? Are they all just product <laughs> shots? Is there any particular thing? Yeah, there's 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 some things that you can do to kind of maximize that experience. Um, understand first that the reason why your images are so important, aside outside of Amazon, you can look at any statistics. Uh, uh, visual media outperforms any other kind. That's just the way it is. And the reason that it's so important is because the buyer is not able to hold your product up and look at it. it doesn't matter what you're buying. If you go to the grocery store right now and then realize. I need another silicon brush, right? You don't just grab one and throw it in your basket. You're at least going to look at it to make sure it's not broken, right? More than likely, you're going to actually look at a couple of them and I let this one feels cheap. This one I like because it's a little thicker. Okay, we'll get that one, right? Your buyer can't do that on Amazon. So you have to show them everything you can. So the first thing you want is to make sure you have a decent number of product shots from every angle so they can see all of the product. After that, uh, I recommend something that I call staged shots, which is where you put the product in an environment where it looks natural. So for example, if you're selling a, uh, a potato masher, you might set it up leaning against some potatoes on like a cutting board in a kitchen, right? That's a staged shot. It's just, you know, I mean, that's, that's what 
big box companies do with their brochures all the time. Then you want to do something that I call an action shot or a lifestyle shot where you, you can show the product in use, but you can also put models in it that depict your target demographic. And the reason you want to do that is because if you can get your potential buyer to picture themselves using your product, you will probably win. The, I mean, that's, that's the thing that gets them to buy. So if you sell an arthritis cream and you have a picture of an elderly person rubbing it into their elbow, for example, you're much more likely to get that elderly person who's looking at the listing to picture themselves doing that also. So that's vital. And then the last shot that I think is really good is what I call an infographic. Um, infographics give you the ability to point out key features and benefits um, without having to rely on explaining it. So to give you an example, let's say you have a running belt. Your running belt happens to have three hidden pockets. If you put in the bullets, three hidden pockets, that's cool. But how much more powerful is it to have an image with arrows pointing saying, these are where the three hidden pockets are. That's called an infographic. And you can put so much information in an infographic, especially if you have a really complex product that will help the buyer understand fully what it is that you're offering. And the more they understand, the more comfortable they are with the price that you gave them and the fact that this is in fact what they're looking for, the closer you'll get to that buy. Fantastic. So um, we're talking about multiple angles. We've got the stage shots, the lifestyle shots, which I agree that the, the whole thing of getting your buyer to put themselves into the picture, as it were, you know, or the closest you can get is a really important psychological principle. How do you divide that up then? If you've got nine shots, which you have for most um, product categories, how would you divide that up roughly? I, I wouldn't say that I divide it up in any specific way because usually that is completely determined by how many good shots you got from your photographer. Um, I, I usually only do one infographic, but there are some products like uh, consumables, for example, or uh, products that aren't necessarily as complex, but there's a lot of information surrounding them where you might have a lot more infographics. And if you have a really good graphic designer, you might as well put them to work. Uh, but for me, I usually rely heavily on action shots. Um, because my products happen to be textile in uh, kind of an apparel accessory niche. So as many models as I can get, you know, using and wearing the stuff. Uh, so it really does depend on, on your niche. Um, however many white background shots you need to show every angle, you know, and it doesn't have to be like 20 degrees, 20 degrees, 20 degrees, but it's like show from the front, show from the back, show from the side. So maybe three, usually I have about three white background. And then I personally fill in the rest with action shots. But if you have, you know, like a unique supplement, for example, that you just want to show it compared to other ones, you might have more than one infographic. That's one infographic, the comparison chart. And another one shows a picture of all of the ingredients. That's another infographic. So it really depends on what you, you know, what you sell. Excellent. Well, that's a very good uh, nuanced response because really responding to the environment you're in and the selling points that you need to get across to a customer is a very intelligent point but also i like the fact that you're not over emphasizing emphasizing the white background shops and what strikes me these days is there's a lot of very competent sellers with a lot of good quality white background background shots now but the lifestyle shots are still a bit underused in some listings and sometimes you look at it it pings off the page at you i find so that's a, a really excellent tip and uh, that certainly ties in with my experience as an amazon shopper as well so we talked about the title, the images. Um, so tell us a little bit more about the bullets, but also let's let's talk about this. You mentioned two different things, which I think maybe need thinking about separately or, or having a conversation about. So you talked about traffic and conversions. Now, presumably conversions are about human beings and traffic is about the algorithm. So tell us about how do you balance those two things out when it comes to the words in the listing generally? So everything, um, all the copy in your listing has a purpose. And uh, part of that purpose is driving Amazon spiders and algorithm to know what your product is relevant for, what to crawl and index, and then where to rank you. However, every bit of it has to be re uh, read and understood by a human being. So this is where science becomes art. Um, and it starts with the title. 
the basically everything needs to be both keyword rich and benefit driven. Uh, to give you a real, I'm just going to give you a real world example because that might illustrate this the best, right? Uh, this is an example I actually stumbled upon by accident as a shopper not too long ago. Let's say you are shopping for a cat brush. Uh, you'll you'll type in cat brush in Amazon. You'll look uh, to the left hand side, and you'll see all the pictures of brushes. Chances are the brushes aren't going to look any different from each other uh, in, in in regards to if it's a cat brush or a dog brush. It's probably the same thing. But you're looking for a cat brush. You see an awesome picture of a brush. So what's the next thing you do? Look to the right to the title. If it says dog brush, you're probably going to go to the next one, even though it probably works for both. So you have an opportunity here. Your title can then say pet brush for cats, dogs, rabbits, long or short fur. That fits within 80 characters. It captures the cat brush buyer, the dog brush buyer, the rabbit brush buyer, and conveys the message it could work for any length hair, pretty much for any any pet. You've done your job right there. That that part of the title actually helps you get the click. When you click on it, um, basically the rest of the copy kind of follows the same way, right? What it does is it conveys benefit using important keywords. So pet brush is really important. Long and short fur might be important, maybe less important, but the most important part of that is that it conveys the benefit to the buyer that it can be used for either. Um, and you'll and that'll continue in the bullets. Um, when you structure bullets, you're going to point out important features and make sure that the keywords that kind of relate to that important feature are in there. And that way you're having the conversation to both the buyer and the spiders. Um, this is the reason why Amazon copywriters get paid so well, because it, 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 I don't think it's, it's a hard skill to learn, but it is a skill that you have to learn. Yep. That makes total sense. And I like the fact that you, uh, you say it's not a science and art, but yeah, it's kind of the science is the keyword research and the art is right in the copy, I guess. So, uh, Yep, I like it. I like it very much. Um, so any other tips about bullets and description? I mean, I, I understand that the description did used to be indexed once upon a time by the algorithm, then for a couple of years it wasn't, and now it is. What's your take on all that side of things? It is. We actually ran some, uh, some research on this. We looked and uh, saw that uh, not only is it indexed, but it actually does play a role in SEO. Uh, it appears that bullets are still... Uh, take uh, preference, like they're still uh, preferenced over description, but if all else th things are equal, um, being relative conversion rate, sales velocity, it appears that um, the keyword richness is actually a factor in, in ranking, so it is important. Um, as far as how to set those up, your bullets are your product features. These are going to be read. However, how thoroughly depends on the type of buyer. So you're actually targeting two different audiences, the guys that are scanning real quick and the guys that want to do their due diligence. So typically we structure our bullets as benefit or feature really, really short in all caps and then a dash and then go into more detail. Uh, the short all caps is for the scanner. So, okay. Uh, I know that uh, uh, it's BPA free, okay, and it's um, you know machine washable, okay, good. That's what I needed to know because they are looking at that. They have to know that it has the features that that they want before they buy it. And then those that are doing their due diligence go into more detail. They'll actually read the rest of it. Uh, so that's how you structure those. Uh, still try to make everything as concise as possible because Amazon does cut off bullets after a certain point in some layouts and some browsers. Um, so you want to get as many above the fold as you can put your most important in the top three. So it shows up in the, uh, the preview on mobile and then for your description, um, it just, it makes it look more professional and it's good for SEO, both because the description is actually crawled not only by Amazon spiders, but it's indexed by Google as well. So this is a good place for technical specifications. This is a good place for, if you don't have any technical specifications, just, you know, tell a story <laughs> that like puts the, the buyer in the driver's seat of, of using your product. Uh, it, fleshing it out doesn't hurt. 
a lot of people may not ever make it there to read it, but at very least, it makes your listing look more professional. It's there for SEO purposes. Um, break it up with some minor HTML, uh, B tags and, T and uh, P tags, that's bold and paragraph. Those are allowed, and it just kind of makes it easier to read for anybody that does make it there. And um, yeah, and that's, I mean, then that's it. That's it in a nutshell. Great.